In the midst of the current health crisis, President Trump is calling for Americans to go back to work. Now, going back to work uh, right now is obviously against the warnings by health professionals from both inside and outside the administration. Dr. Fauci, of course, uh, is one who is urging for a at least five-week national lockdown. However, on Monday, President Trump signaled that he could move as early as next week to lift federal social distancing guidelines and encourage some Americans to return to work. He said, quote, America will again and soon be open for business very soon. Now, that would be he's planning on bringing everything back by Easter. So that is soon. Not good, right? Uh, in fact, it's a lot sooner than the three or four months that uh, people were suggesting, right? And that's what Donald Trump had said. Uh, so now joining him is Goldman Sachs Senior Chairman Lloyd Blankfein. Uh, now, on Sunday, Blankfein tweeted that measures such as temporarily shutting down business to halt the spread of COVID-19 were, quote, crushing the economy, jobs, and morale. Oh, no, the, the, the shutting down is hurting morale in the economy. No, not the virus that's rampaging. No, nothing to do with that. No, we got all the confidence in the world. No, ridiculous. No, look, you think it's bad now. Wait till hospitals are overrun with the sick and dying. That's not good for the economy. That's actually really, really bad. Uh, but hey, anything to preserve your bottom line there, Lloyd. What a sociopath. All right. So now um, Blankfein said, quote, within a very few weeks, let those with a lower risk to the disease return to work. But if we do that, understand that we're going to keep spreading it in waves and it's going to keep coming back. We're going to keep shutting down, and it's going to come back, and we're going to shut down. And unless we do what's necessary, what needs to be done, which is a complete lockdown for a determined period of time, whatever the doctors are saying, uh, then it's going to keep coming back. We're never going to get rid of this thing. Uh, so now we also had uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick saying that older people would be more than happy to sacrifice themselves at the altar of Wall Street in order to help the economy. That is absolutely gross. Uh, this sixth response, of course, from some prominent conservatives and the president, spawned the Twitter hashtag, not dying for Wall Street, which is currently trending. Uh, these are people saying, a lot of progressives, but a lot of people as well, uh, saying that we will not go back to normal as long as there is significant numbers of people at risk. Yes, older people. Uh, now, let me go to uh, Benjamin Dixon. He's a friend of the show. Uh, and he's part of this, uh, prominent part of this hashtag. And he says this, quote, if we have to rent strike, general strike, whatever has to happen, we will not die for oligarchs. The system crashes without our participation, but they cannot force us to participate at the expense of our lives. It, now, as I said, Benjamin Dixon's a, a good friend of mine. I, I've had the pleasure of watching him radicalize since at least before Mike Bloomberg got into the race uh, and he took down Bloomberg. So, Benjamin, keep it up, man. Rocking that. You're rocking it. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, he's absolutely right. Uh, yes, even while young people are less at risk of dying, they can spread the virus very, sim very, very quickly, uh, sometimes asymptomatically. But young people can also die from it as well. I mean, even if you have a small percentage, 2% of the population, that's still millions of people, right? Uh, in a, you know, in a society, in a population, that's over 350 million people. So you have to keep that math in mind. There's a lot of people that can die from this. It, it is not just the seasonal flu. Now, author and uh, activist Eric Blanc also wrote, uh, he's a writer for Jacobin, uh, and he said, we have now reached a point where, according to experts, only a five-week national lockdown can avoid public health catastrophe. Yet the Wall Street Journal and the Lloyd Blank finds of the world are proposing the exact opposite, ending lockdown, lockdowns rather than extending them. Even the limited governmental measures taken so far are apparently too much for Wall Street to stomach. Unless we, make, uh, we take action, Wall Street may get its way. 
And of course, in this case, literally, there will be a lot of death. Not good. Uh, now, he continues by saying, stopping Trump from scrapping our existing health, public health measures is literally a matter of life and death. We need to do everything possible to force the White House and its corporate backers to take the urgent measures that experts agree are necessary to prevent a public health catastrophe. Our lives are on the line. So here's the thing. Donald Trump and a lot of these conservatives, they either don't get it or they they don't care, right? Because it hasn't personally affected them. You know, the thing that, that makes Republicans most aware, right, is when something personally happens to them. And then suddenly it's like, oh, my God, I didn't realize. Oh, now we must do something about this because this is a catastrophe. I mean, look, you got Mitt Romney. That's in isolation right now. You got Rand Paul. You know, Ron Paul, uh, Rand's father, just two weeks prior to that diagnosis, called this whole thing a hoax. And Rand Paul voted against relief packages. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen when he gets out of isolation. That's if he makes it, because, again, he may be asymptomatic right now, but he's got a, I mean, he's fairly old, right? And he's more at risk because he's got a lung injury. So they, uh, he had, they, they had to remove part of his lung. So, and, and this, is a, <laughs> this is a disease that attacks the lungs. It's a virus that attacks the lungs. So absolute disaster. Gene, let's hope Rand Paul learns something, right? But I don't know if he will. However, there is a couple of notable conservatives, one uh, at least, uh, that agrees with us. And that's, of all people, Liz Cheney. Let me show you what she uh, tweeted here. Quote, there will be no fu normal functioning economy if our hospitals are overwhelmed and thousands of Americans of all ages, including our doctors and nurses, lay dying because we have failed to do what is necessary to stop the virus. Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. I cannot believe that she... And look, I understand, low bar, right? This is, the, this is the bar that is so low in America that when Liz Cheney says something that is remotely factual and is like, hey, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't let so many people die. That, uh, that it's like, oh my God, I can't believe she would say something like that. That is so uncharacteristic of Republicans uh, that we just have to point this out. Wow. But hey, facts don't care about feelings. Facts don't care about your markets. They don't care about your portfolio, and they certainly don't care about anything else. They're facts. We need to stay home. We need to practice social distancing. We need to isolate ourselves physically. If it comes to it, and uh, Republicans and Democrats fail to do the right thing, fail to pass something that saves lives, and make sure that rent's paid, and, and, and that we can afford food, well, then it's time for a general strike. I understand what I'm calling for, right? Don't go to work. Don't pay your bills. Don't pay your rent. Do nothing, right? If enough people do that, I mean, look, you want to put the markets over our lives. All right, we'll just burn down the markets. One now. I mean, what they don't want us to understand is that enough of us we can stop, we can bring everything to a screeching halt because it depends on us. I mean, who are the people that are keeping the economy going as it is? Truck drivers, right? Grocery store workers, stockers. The people who, uh, you know, a lot of these same conservatives say, oh, you should just get a better job. Oh, you guys don't matter. It's a job for kids. Those are the people that are keeping the economy afloat right now. And of course, nurses and medical assistants. Uh, and people on the front lines also. I mean, those people make, for example, a, a medical assistant makes like $30,000 a year. Not a high paying job. Not, it's, not like, it's not like getting paid, uh, you know, six figures working at Goldman Sachs. Okay. Uh, and so these are the people that are keeping not only people alive right now at great risk to themselves, but then you have others who are, you know, helping keep people fed 
and and toilet paper on the shelves. I mean, in at least on some shelves, uh, and, and and keeping people stocked with goods that they need to survive. Those are also people at most risk. Gas station workers, the people that they say again get a better job, are now running the economy. What's what's Lloyd Blankfein doing? Huh? What are the Republicans doing? What are the CEOs doing? The people with the yachts, private equity. What are you, what are you doing to help the economy? You're not doing a damn thing. No, no, no. We they need us, right? And they and they know it, and they've always known it. But you know who hasn't known it? Us. Because, well, they think they'll never catch on. They'll never know how important that they really are. But if we decide we're not going to take it anymore and participate in an economy that lets millions of us die from a pandemic in order to help their bottom lines, in order to help people like Lloyd Blankline, if we decide not to do that, then there's nothing that they can do because the whole thing falls apart without us, without regular working people. Remember that. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show, you know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.